Hey folks, it's James. It's day 12 of the 12 days of Procreate, and that means two things. Number one, I'm going to miss each of you when this is over. Seriously, so many new people have joined, and uh, I expect to see you here every day, right? So that shouldn't be a problem. And number two, I thought I would end these 12 days with, instead of another tip or technique, with the five most common things that are holding people back from starting Procreate, and what you can do to get around each of them. So get out your iPads, download all of the amazing and goodies in the description below and get ready to learn how to get around the five most common reasons people give for why they haven't started Procreate yet. I'm going to walk you through the five most common excuses that hold all of us back from learning digital drawing so you can stop worrying and reclaim the advantages of hand drawing in the modern digital era. Excuse number five, what canvas should I use? If you'd like to present hard copies of your work to clients or work at a table with a design team using pencils and tracing paper, then printing on paper is your best choice. So make your canvas a printer-friendly size like 11 by 17 or 8.5 by 11 or A3 or A4 if you're in a metric country. Then select 300 dpi and just go for it. This produces a printer-ready canvas with 27 layers, which is plenty for most projects. If YouTube is your end audience, maybe because your clients love it when you record your video replays, then use the aspect ratio of a typical 1080p YouTube video and create a document that's 1920 by 1080 by 300 dpi. If you want to make large-scale prints of your plans and renderings, like this painting I made in Procreate and printed on watercolor paper, then high resolution is the key, and you should size your canvas with pixels instead of inches or centimeters, creating a canvas with at least 600 dpi, balanced, of course, against the number of layers you think you will need, because the larger and higher the resolution the canvas you create, the fewer layers Procreate is able to supply you with to develop your drawing. Excuse number four, I don't know what brushes to use. Again, the key is to keep it simple. If you like pens or pencils or markers in real life, then start with the Procreate equivalent in your digital drawing life. If you like fine point pens, use the number one technical pen right here in the brushes that come with Procreate or at the top of my curated and numbered brush set for architects, you can download at the link in the description below this video. As with all the brushes, use the sliders on the left to adjust the width and the opacity to your taste, then choose a color and go. If you like to create gradients when you add tone or shade to your sketches, use the number six soft brush and just make lazy strokes back and forth to build them up. This works especially well with a selection tool, allowing you to limit the extent of the tones you apply or even erase tones after the fact with a selection followed by a three finger swipe. If you prefer to use a brush that really does look like a pencil, then try one of the pencil brushes. But I have to warn you that these can be tricky. In real life, you can lay a pencil down at an angle like this and vary the pressure to create soft washes of tone. But this is more clumsy in Procreate with the Apple Pencil, and it often generates a more blotchy layer of tone it doesn't have the evenness or the nuance of real life pencil. My answer has been to use something like the Narinder pencil brush when I want a line that looks like a pencil, but then to use the number six soft brush as I showed you before to generate gradients of tone and shade instead of generating them with a pencil. If you like magic markers, you're in luck. Both the number five flat brush and the number seven round brush create a fantastic magic marker effect, and I even use them to approximate the watercolors I used to do. Just experiment with the pressure you apply to get a feel for how dark or light you want to make your strokes. And remember, if you make a mistake, just use the eraser to clean up. The eraser menu accesses all the same brushes and can be used to clean up the edges of your magic marker washes after the fact, something that just isn't possible in the real world. Excuse number three, but there's so many colors, I don't know which one to pick. The good news is you literally never get the color wrong because you can always change it after the fact. Just get started with some random color. I often use red or blue. 
Then use the Hue, Saturation, and Brightness menu under Adjustments to change that color at any time. You can even borrow the palette of a favorite painting or photograph by selecting that option at the top of the palette menu. One of the most amazing things about Procreate to me is that so long as an area of color is on its own layer, you can go to the adjustment menu and select Hue, Saturation, and Brightness at any time and modify that color. You can even use the options later to completely replace the color by first selecting the layer within the Layers menu, then dragging and dropping a new color, or tapping the Fill Layer option in the drop-down menu. If you want help selecting colors that look good together, Procreate even does that by providing a Color Harmony palette that can help you set up a range of complementary colors. So please, get over your fears of color. Excuse number two but I don't know how to use layers. The sheer number of layers and the things you can do with them can be daunting, but keep it simple and think of them as a stack of tracing paper with a line drawing or the most important things on top and the colors that show through in the layers below. Once you get better, you can do some fancy moves like adding a twilight layer in multiply mode at the top of the stack and then add opaque white lighting effects above that but let's keep it simple for now. If you ever start a layer in the wrong place, no worries. Just tap and hold the layer, then drag it up or down to rearrange the order. And finally, excuse number one, but what can I draw on an iPad? This is the existential question we all face. But digital drawing apps make even this question easier. For those of us who have always drawn in a notebook or sketchbook, my favorite way to start is to sketch the way you always have, then take a picture of your sketch and import it directly into Procreate. That way you can set it up on its own layer, manipulate it any way you want, then add layers above it to keep developing your ideas. Another of my favorite ways to begin is to sketch with loose blobs that I would never want anyone to see but that I know will help me slowly visualize the image I'm looking for, all inside a thin, lightweight iPad that I can use anywhere, from a coffee shop to the beach to a corporate boardroom. This is such sweet liberation and goes a long way towards eliminating the anxiety we all feel over creating that perfect sketch the first time we touch pencil to paper. To learn more about ready-made grids and scale rulers that will help you draw to scale in Procreate, click on the Grids and Scale Rulers link in the description below. To download a free interactive guide to every tutorial on this channel, click on the One-Click Tutorial Guide link in the description below. To purchase the curated Procreate for Architects brush set I use, tap the Brushes for Architects link in the description below. I want to remind you all of three things. Number one, be sure to download the one-click interactive guide in the description below. It's a guide to all of the 200 plus videos on this channel so you can keep learning no matter what playlist you're watching. Number two, to go deeper with Procreate, check out the list of online courses I offer below also in the description below. And number three, I really want to tell you all how much you mean to me and uh, this has been a great experience and I'm going to make more playlists like this so you can just take your drawing to the next level and eventually we'll get you over to iPad and to Procreate and you can see what it's like to take your drawing to the next level. So click here for the next video and I'll see you in the next lesson.